constitution has been thrown has been torn up democracy has been thrown aside the petition is found not maintainable sadly and i say it with the greatest of sadness some of the persons who were in the minority in the zuel fugar ali bhutto trial case joined the majority in this case but so but that is so so pakistan has a very tumultuous history as far as politics is concerned the first prime minister of pakistan was assassinated yaqat ali khan shaheed the second prime minister khwaja nazimuddin from dhaka east pakistan was dismissed by a bureaucrat zulfikar ali bhutto was ordered to be hung on the orders of the supreme court and with the comes the fourth constitutional deviation significant constitutional deviation i should add and that was by general parvez musharraf once again the case of zafar hadi shah this time the chief justice was irshad hasan khan and sadly included others like chaudhry iftikhar and rana bhagwan das and once again the unconstitutional act was endorsed and the power to amend the constitution was given by those who did not have this power who could not bestow this power to someone who could not exercise it whether one laughs or cries i don't know the supreme court told general zia uh, general prerogative yes your acts are legal your acts are constitutional oh, by the way have this power to amend the constitution as well you don't have it you are a paid servant of the state we don't have it we are also paid servants of the people but we give it to you nonetheless then what happens on his watch the former prime minister benazir bhutto is is assassinated what then happens and i say it with considerable bit of shame is the role of the judiciary there have been good there have been bad but i am laying it out as there is it is the people who judge we judge but you all judge us you judge us i would only request that you don't judge us as an in institution because there is good in the institution there is also bad in the institution judges judge us as judges condemn me as a judge do not condemn the supreme court condemn a general who violates the constitution by name do not condemn the military or the armed forces of pakistan condemn a bureaucrat by name do not condemn the executive of pakistan and that is the important distinction we talk about the roles of institutions we should talk about the roles within institutions that is the key the constitutional aspects will keep considering we have we should not there are there is good and evil there is good and bad everywhere so let us separate the good from the bad and i for one welcome criticism speaking in my personal capacity criticize me to your heart's content you will never be hauled up for contempt of court but do not criticize the institution because without institutions a country implodes it breaks apart and we are, i am not talking philosophically i am talking practically we have seen it happen we are seeing it happening so we have to be very careful pakistan needs a the uh, judiciary pakistan needs the executive pakistan needs the military part of the executive and more than anything else pakistan needs to be led by the elected representatives of the people pakistan needs democracy you remove democracy from pakistan you stab it in the back you destroy it you are the enemy of the people you are the enemy of the state and that is what article 6 
says, I have an added burden which all of you do not have. I and the law minister here, the others do not. That is to uphold the constitution of Pakistan and to preserve and defend it. All of you have to abide by the constitution under Article 5. So there is a greater test for those who are paid by all of you, which is us. We don't pay you. The elected representatives of the people are not paid. They receive a stipend for the duration that they are an MPA, MNA, or as the, uh, with the grace of the Almighty, uh, become a federal minister, you may get a salary for, only for the duration. We are taken care of for life. We get pensions. They don't. The MPAs, the MNAs, they don't get pensions and they get a stipend and this, that is not comparable with the salaries of those who are paid by the people of Pakistan. That is you. Please do hold us accountable individually. Another Prime Minister removed this time and this is another, another first contempt of court law. Uh, never happened before. So we get an assassination, we get a hanging, we get a removal, we get a disillusion, or we get a contempt removal. Does it end there? Sadly, no. Now we are coming into the, <laughs> the trickier waters of recent times. Now, another Prime Minister is removed for non-disclosure of notional income which he never received. I'm not going to comment about this judgment. I'm just saying what it says. It says, Mr. Prime Minister, you were entitled to receive salary. You did not receive it. And you did not disclose it. So, you're not a good Muslim. So we sent you home. That's what the judgment says. I won't say if I agree or not. Anyways, that's what it says. And what, how was it done? Before that, it was preceded by something called JIT. Now, we have become very, uh, by the way, for those who don't know, maybe the foreign guests, it's uh, Joint Investigation Team. Actually, a term which, which, with which I was also pretty unfamiliar because in the, all the laws of Pakistan, you'll search for it, you'll find it only one place. And that is in the Anti-Terrorism Act. Uh, I don't think it is found anywhere else. And the distinguished lawyers like Mr. Abid Saki and Mr. Asin Boon and Mr. Afizur Rahman, whether you can correct me whether there is mention of JIT anywhere else other than the Terrorism Act. But anyways... The normal people who do their work, no, you can't do it, we'll do this, it this way. Okay, fine. So we get a JIT. Another very acronym, like we live in a parallel universe sometimes, is PCO. So, uh, provisional Constitutional Order. Where is it found anywhere? No, it is not found anywhere. Why do you mention it? Well, you have to mention it. Why? Uh, too complicated. Another acronym which all of us have come to know is FATF. Very few know what it actually means, Financial Action Task Force. And I'm ever so glad that from the grey list we have finally gone to the white list. Now I wonder whether if the international, the international body can impose something on us like the FATF and require compliance Cannot you, the citizens of Pakistan, do something similar? Let's call it the CMDC. The Citizens Monitor of Democracy and Constitutionalism. Is that a good acronym for you? Citizens Monitor of Democracy and Constitutionalism. Monitor us all. Monitor those in power. Monitor those whose salaries you are paying. Monitor those whose pensions you are paying. How would I translate it? I was going to speak in Urdu, but uh, 
for the respect to our foreign guests, I decided to change to English and probably Urdu mein isko shayet kaha jaye Jamuriyat aur Ayin ke shayri nigran. Shayet aap mein se jo beter Urdu jante hain, wo bata sakenge. Jamuriyat aur Ayin ke shayri nigran. And let's have a black, grey and a white list. Let me start with my own institution. Yani ke kali surmai or safed liste banaye. Not of institutions, but of individuals in the, within the institutions. Now, I, let me speak about my institutions. I don't want to raise fingers at other, other institutions. My personal opinion, and I now speak as a student of law, not as a judge. I speak as a student of history, not as a judge. I speak as a student of politics. I would put in the black list Justice Muhammad Munir. I would put in the black list Justice Anwarul Haq. I, I would put in the black list Justice Irshad Hassan Khan. I would put in the white list Justice Constantine, Justice Vilani, Justice Bachal, Justice Mohammed Bakhsh. And we have a grey list. There are too many names there. Let's ignore it for the time being. And <laughs> now, if I may dare so and Consider the executive. I will put in the black list General Ayub, General Zia, General Perez Musharraf. Now, I'm not making any sort of statement, but I would put in the white list two white Englishmen, not because they are white. Now, that took you by surprise, didn't I? The first Commander-in-Chief of the Pakistan Army, General Sir Frank Walter, Walter Masservey. He fought in the First and the Second World Wars and he was the first Commander-in-Chief of Pakistan, of United Pakistan or One Pakistan. I would put, even I would put it in a higher, if it even a whiter of a white uh, list would be General Sir Douglas Gracie. And why do I put him, why do I put the second commander-in-chief of the Pakistan army in that list? I would put him in that list. And now my source of information is a book written by a brother of an army chief. The army chief was General Asif Nawaz from 91 to 93. He was uh, the army chief. And his brother was Shuja Nawaz. And his book is Cross, Crossed Swords. Pakistan, its army and wars within. If you get an opportunity, do buy it and read it. And, and he narrates an incident here. He said, General Ayub wanted a plot and applied to General Sir Douglas Gracie, his superior commanding officer. He was rebuffed. So here begins the politics of plots. The politics of plots is very interesting in Pakistan. So, whether it was, and I don't raise fingers on other institutions because they say when you raise a finger four point towards you, let us, let me address the fingers pointing towards me and my institution and those within it. There is, as you know, Article 19A of the Constitution of Pakistan. It's, it's one of the many countries, or the many civilized countries of the world do not have this. It's a right to access to information in all matters of public importance. Now, someone filed a writ petition somewhere, I read about it in the newspaper, that the Supreme Court has filed a writ petition and the case is pending before the High Court. What? Nobody asked me. I'm, 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 I'm supposed to be a judge of the Supreme Court. Registrar Supreme Court. Is he more powerful than me? Oh, I wrote a letter. I wrote a letter to the Chief Justice of Pakistan. The letter is 
dated 16 December 2021. And I quote just one line from it. It's a long letter. Can a public institution... Ah, sorry, let me explain. What had happened was that the Pakistan Information Commission had passed some order requiring some disclosure of some information about employees or whatever of the Supreme Court. I don't know what he asked for because we were never asked and the registrar took it upon himself to challenge it without taking at least my permission. I don't know whose permission he took and he went in before the Supreme Court. Now Supreme Court is standing as a litigant before the High Court. Uh, I can't wrap my head around that, but let that be. I wrote in my letter, can a public institution funded by taxpayers object if information about it is sought? What was the answer to that letter written on 6th of December 2021? None. Earlier, I am sometimes criticized, ridiculed, castigated, abused for writing letters. How else should I defend the constitution of Pakistan? How else should I defend your fundamental rights? How else would we make Article 19A meaningful and not a dead letter law? I wrote an earlier letter 24th of June 2020 address to the Chief Justice of Pakistan that a file came to me offering me a plot in some sector of Islamabad at a nominal price which I could flog next day and earn a, quite a nice retirement passage. I thought, I looked at the our appointing order, the fifth schedule I think it is which provides what the judge should get the presidential order, whether we are entitled to this, I couldn't find anything anywhere. I discussed it with my family. Uh, my, fun, uh, my son was a bit naughty. Baba, you don't want it. I can have it for my retirement. Well, anyways, I wrote a letter to the Chief Justice. I said, I have uh, checked the law. I can't find this. Are we entitled to this uh, thing? And if so, can you please provide me with the law on the subject? And can you also pr uh, provide me, because I wanted to know if anybody has taken plots or not, who, uh, who among the judges have taken plots. Promptly came the answer the next day. And I quote, because you may won't believe it if I do did not, laws are available in the law books. In other words, a rebuke from the Chief Justice of Pakistan to his colleagues, that how ignorant you are, that you know, don't know about this law, go find it yourself. And as regards the other aspect of my letter, asking about information, this is personal. I cannot, I, it cannot be shared with anyone, quote unquote. No. Now, I, sorry, saddened a bit, hurt a bit, probably a little angry, responded the very same day. And I write, like the proverbial unicorn, I cannot find this law. And those holding office under the constitution cannot plead confidentiality when they receive something on account of the office they hold. It is not personal inf information. It is not because I am getting this because of the office I hold, not otherwise. Another letter, this is, another circular comes around and that you are entitled to get gifts of prohibited boar weapons. What? From the Ministry of Interior. So I write again, plead guilty, write too much. 14th of September 2019, I said, how can we, how are we entitled to this? Article 25 applies equally to all, including judges. How can we, uh, by the way, there were nine categories of persons in that list who could get this facility, the president, the prime minister, the judges of the superior courts. Seven of them were constitutional office holders and there were two more categories. I won't go into those constitutional because I really want accountability within first. 
uh, did I receive an answer? No answer to this one either. So I, I, I don't know. We should be grateful to the lady in whose honor this conference is being held. I, how did she become famous? How did she become known? She became known because of this book, because of a decision in this book. The decision in this book is Miss Asma Jilani, as she then was, versus the government of the Punjab. And the number of the appeal is very interesting. Criminal Appeal Number 19 of 1972, Freedom of Speech and Expression. So anyway, Asma Jilani, and can you imagine, it's 50 years to the day when this decision uh, happened. Her father, uh, Malik Jilani, was incarcerated under the defense of Pakistan rules. The other petition, two petitions were heard, was by the daughter of Altaf Gohar, the editor of Dawn, who had been picked up under some, one of those laws. Uh, so these, th th this was challenged. Now, but don't judges come under pressure, fear? No, they don't. I was Chief Justice for five years. Nobody called me to ask anything. So if anybody tells you there is pressure, if anybody tells you pressure, they are not true to their oath of office. If anyone says we are being pressurized with someone and you can't, as the saying goes, if you can't handle the heat in the kitchen, get out. And if you are pressurized and you sell the country, their history will remember you. You all will pass judgment. There won't be any consequences. It will be in the history books. Those persons like myself would have gone away. And now, how it saddened me, it brought tears to my eyes when a Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Pakistan said that there was pressure on me and he said that on television, public television by General Ziaul Haq to do this judgment in the Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto case. Do you hang, do you take away a person's life because of pressure? If you couldn't handle it, a resignation letter would have sufficed. Let us learn from our own history. Let us not learn from the Professor Hans Kelsen of Austria. Let the Muhammad Munirs, let the Anwarul Haqs learn from the example of Imam Malik, the founder of one of the foremost schools of Islamic law. The former school of, there are four Sunni schools of Islamic law. Imam Malik was the first. He lived and died in Medina. His book, Al Mawatta, uh, those of interested in Islamic history and religion, what did he do and say? He gave a ruling, religious ruling, which we call fatwa, saying that. Divorce under compulsion is no divorce. Now, on its own you would say, well, why should he suffer for that? Well, he did suffer for that. And I would like to read you his exact words. What the ruler of the day perceived this, because then there was oaths of allegiance used to be taken, bath, and under compulsion. So he, the ruler said that by analogy this will be used against me that if a divorce under compulsion is no divorce then an oath under religion is no divorce. So he was called upon to recant. He said I will never recant what I believe to be the faith, what I know to be the truth. What happened to him? He was imprisoned. imprisoned. He suffered indignities, he was tortured, still did not recant. All he had to, then he was told, stop, okay, don't, you don't want to recant, 
stops uh, telling people about this thing that divorce under compulsion is uh, uh, is no divorce he didn't do that either so he was paraded through the streets of Medina he it was a great humiliation for a great scholar for uh, uh, to have his beard shaven off he, he, that indignity he suffered and he was paraded so if I shave off my beard probably you may not recognize me so while he was being paraded he said Anas bin Abbi no so uh, and he introduced himself he said those of you who knows who know me or oh, sorry who recognize me would recognize me that I'm Malik the son of Anas and those of you who don't know that I am Malik son of Anas and I say divorce under compulsion is no divorce so this is our glorious tradition no pressure is he the solitary example no come to the another founder of an uh, of uh, Abu Hanifa and this part of the world Muslims majority, majority at least are belonging to the Hanafi sect of Islam uh, what did he what happened to him he was he told the ruler and I should just he did not uh, this is after the Umayyad Caliphate was overthrown by the uh, Abbasids and Safa as you know was a barbarian who killed many and his brother Abu Jafar al-Mansur was the founder of the considered the founder of the Abbasid Khalifa, Caliphate and he did not recognize his authority this is Imam Abu Hanifa he was nobody no judge he was an ordinary person he said the Muslim Republic is founded on the collective endorsement of the people if I may say for the audience in Urdu, Khilafat e Muslimano ke ishtima aur se hoti hai, mashwere se hoti hai, ishtima hi mashwere se hoti hai. Laying down the foundation of democracy. What else is democracy? He used to criticize the judgments, the actions of the ruler. So what the ruler did. He said, okay, you know so much, I appoint you as the chief justice. He says, no, I will not. I, I, will not, I do not accept because he did not want to accept anything because he did not consider the rule uh, legitimate. So he was given 110 lashes as punishment. He did not recant. He was then offered, okay, I appoint you as the mufti. Mufti is the person who could give uh, authoritative finding on a provision of Islamic law. I mean, uh, maybe someone else can better put it, but that's the best I can do. So he was imprisoned, imprisonment, and he died in, uh, in, in jail. And he left a will, and this is very significant, and this is what he suffered. And when he died he left a will a wasiya it's a very famous wasiya of imam abu hanifa which said that do not bury me in any land which is under the illegal occupation of this ruler so the ruler al mansur responded when he read this he said man Yazarni man abi hanifa hayyan wa mayyatan and in, if I may translate it that mujhe abu hanifa se kon bacha sakta hai zindagi mein bhi aur marne ke baad bhi in other words who will save me from abu, abu hanifa while he was alive and while he is dead that even after his death he came to haunt him that he had put a condition in his will that do not bury me so this is the glorious tradition, our glorious tradition, which we have forgotten. We have forgotten 
the democratic traditions of the founder of the country. We have forgotten the constitutionalism, constitutionalism that made this country, which made the country united. We should not embark on something new. We should not embark on discovering something else. We should go back and discover old truths which held us good. I am sorry for exceeding my time limit, but I did not get any, <laughs> what is it, note verbal in, your, in the diplomatic language. So once again, I am uh, truly humbled and we must salute this diminutive figure. She was a very diminutive figure, but boy, she was one big lady. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. YouTube पर Google TV देखने के लिए YouTube.com की सर्च बार में Google TV टाइप करें। Google TV के पेज पर सुर्ख रंग के सब्सक्रिप्शन वाले बटन पर क्लिक करना ना भूलिए। YouTube पर अपलोड होने वाली वीडियो से बाखबर रहने के लिए बेल आइकॉन पर क्लिक कीजिए। आपको हर नई आने वाली वीडियो के बारे में नोटिफिकेशन मौसूल हो जाएगा।